I'm always telling my standers how to stand your, your spouse is being hurtful. They're cheating on you. They're um, just creating difficulties for life. The fact that they've left you or divorced you or annulled you or, or whatever. And I am so happy that my, my spouse, my standers, I'm sorry, seem to really get it. And, and what, I don't talk about a lot is what's needed so much for my standards is the greatest of humility. Humility is really um, something I talk to them about is even if your spouse is 90% of the, of the problem is admitting the 10% that was yours. And I want to talk about this right now because I can think of, I've met some standards in my life where they're doing all the things and, and it, they're like, I'm still standing, still want to get back together. Can't wait for my spouse to come back through the door, but you really aren't yet exhibiting the amount of humility you need to exhibit. And my greatest example is I think of a couple standards that I've talked to that still call their, their, their wife in this case, the adulteress, the adulteress. And I remember saying to one of them, and I said, yes, she is in fact an adulteress. And I said, do you want to reconcile with your spouse? And I remember he was taken aback and, and he's like, well, of course I do. I well, said, so why do you call her an adulteress? Or she is. And so in this interchange that we had, there was this refusal to see the harshness of the perspective. There was this refusal to see that I'm putting her here. And even if it's just a little, I'm putting me here because I'm the stander. I'm the good guy. Look at me doing what's right. And when my wife in this example comes back and says, she's sorry, I will gladly take her back. I want you to think about your perspective. How do you see your Pro, your, your prodigal do you see them as someone who betrayed you or do you see them as perhaps one that God used to allow you to lose your arrogance lose your pride search is there any self-righteousness is there any belief that I'm the good guy and my prodigal is the bad guy because of among the rules of standards is that one. You are not the good guy. Your prodigal is not the bad guy. Yeah, they sinned in this way against you, but you are a sinner too. In what ways have you sinned against your spouse? What have you, what did you do in the past? And maybe you don't even need to look at that. But this might be an opportunity for you to get on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me for judging my spouse. Forgive me for not seeing. Forgive me for not putting myself in his or her perspective. God, help me to see myself the way you see me. Help me to see my flaws in a new way that I have never seen. Help me to see how my laws have caused my spouse to leave. Yes, she had an affair. Yeah. But if you continue to think that that is the only reason she left, you will never reconcile. If you think perhaps maybe my spouse has been trying to get me to listen and I just don't listen. I think I listen. I say I listen. See, I listened. But if you don't hear what they're saying, problem is you. Because I've met many former prodigals, including myself, who look at our spouses and say, you just are not hearing what I'm saying. You don't get it. That's where my job is to, to help. I don't come into my, my profession saying my, the prodigals are bad and you're good. I actually come into this profession, this, this vocation that God has given me to lead standers, to look at you standers and say, you need to fix yourself. 
no matter what. Because God will not bring your spouse back until you've carefully and humbly looked at every single flaw you have, no matter their proportion to your spouse's. And even if God himself stood next to you and said, yes, 95% of the problem is your spouse's, you're only 5%. But if you are unwilling to admit your 5%, it's the same as Jesus saying, yeah, we've got all kinds of sinners, but the one who won't admit their fault, no matter how small their sin is, it's a big sin right there of pride, arrogance. And that I will not accept. And therefore, I will not bring your spouse back until you look at your 5% with a very humble and pure desire to fix yourself. To apologize, to repent, and to be the man or the woman that God called you to be. Yeah, you might be angry that it your husband is keeping the kids from you or your wife is convincing them you're the only bad guy. and You're not there to help raise your children. Those are things that would make a normal person angry. But if you keep seeing that as only the fault of your prodigal spouse and not perhaps, oh, wow, if I fixed this 5%, and that alone was what God's been waiting for so that my prodigal would come back and then I could help raise my children. You are contributing to not seeing your children, not just your spouse. Recently, someone told me I needed to be more gentle. Uh, I've heard that before. <laughs> I'm working on that. But sometimes the Lord calls me to be direct. Whatever it takes. I don't want anyone to ever say Christine Bacon paints her pic paints a picture of herself and her group as these self-righteous people who were the good people. We're not. We're sinners. Because your prodigal is in the far country, you stand or need to constantly check yourself. That's your job. That's all you have control over. And once you've done that, the rest is in the Lord's hands. But dare I say, we have to do that every day. So Lord, help me be a better person today than I was yesterday in a very clear, tangible, and articulatable way. What are your flaws? What's God trying to fix in you? Are you selfish? Are you arrogant? Are you self-righteous? Are you proud? Are you antagonistic? Are you insensitive? Are you a poor listener? Dig deep into those conversations you have with your spouse for years before he or she ever left. Let the Holy Spirit guide you if you're struggling. What's the one that just keeps poking and poking and poking you? And maybe you want to look at that. It's a good place to start. And if you need help, you can find me. I will do my best to be the voice of the Holy Spirit or let the Holy Spirit speak through me because I never want my words to be those that come out of my mouth, only the Lord's. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. You can find me on breakfastwithbacon.com. But until then, and always remember to live your life sunny side up.